Hello, I'm Father Louis Skurdy with Friends of the Word for a very special edition honoring Blessed Miriam Teresa Demjanovich. I'm here at the Mother House of the Sisters of Charity at Common Station with a very dear friend, Sister Diane Colasano. Welcome, Diane. Pleasure. Now, this is outstanding because Sister, oh, Sister Teresa, but I can also call her Blessed Teresa, was recently at the cathedral in the Basilica, Sacred Heart Basilica in Europe, beatified, made blessed, raised to another rank on her journey towards sainthood. And you were involved in that whole cause, as, the, as they call it. Well, what I, I had the blessing at the beatification to do the second reading at the liturgy, which was wonderful. For the cause itself, I wasn't directly involved in the presenting the materials that had to be presented to Rome. Sister Man Mary Canavan is our vice postulator, yes, yes, yes. and she, along with some other sisters over many years, Sister Marion, I would say, did that type of work. But what I've been able to do, my contribution is more current in that I am, I'm a theologian, and so hopefully I help to make Sister Miriam's message, her spirituality, accessible to people today. It's great. And there's something very special about uh, Blessed Miriam. Uh, in my life, she is a Hudson County woman. That's right. Okay? And uh, she was from Bayonne, New Jersey. Sister's going to give us a little bio, but um, her, her parish is still there. Mm -hmm. And you had another celebration right, with the, the day, Ukrainian bishop. The day following the beatification, the Byzantine Ruthenian Church, where Sister was baptized, St. John the Baptist, in Bayonne, held a special liturgy to honor the beatification. And many of us were very blessed to be able to attend the event, um, and it was presided by the bishop, the Ruthenian bishop, um, and it was a wonderful ex experience of the two rites of the church coming together for celebration. Mm. Now, uh, Blessed Miriam studied here at the College of yes, St. Elizabeth. Yes, she did. She was an undergraduate here. Was the chapel here then? You know, I'm... The chapel would have been here. Yet. So she had a place here at the chapel. I believe so. And here she is in her college, mm -hmm. uh, high school, uh, high school uh, college, college yearbook. That was yearbook. her senior picture from the from when she was a student here. And later on, when she became a sister of charity, yes, that it changed to the the habit. The habit, that correct. We're very familiar with. She would have worn the novice habit of the day. Okay, so let's talk about Sister Miriam, and and we'll have a few subsequent uh, presentations. Uh, let's start with the origins, um, discuss her life in Bayonne, because there's so many beautiful little stories Absolutely. associated with that. She was the youngest of seven children. Her parents were immigrants from Slovakia, and as a result, you see in her very much the history most of us can relate to, okay. the immigrant family of hardworking parents um, trying to provide the best for their children. She was particularly close to her brother, who was only 18 months older than she, what people today sometimes call Irish twins. Right, 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 right. Um, Subsequently became a priest. He became a priest in the Newark Archdiocese. He called her shrimp <laughs> uh, because she often liked to ride on the handlebars of his bicycle. Isn't that amazing? She was very fond of playing baseball and played with the boys, since there was no girls' team around at the time, so <laughs> she played with the local boys. But from the time she was young, she grew up in a family that valued family prayer. They prayed morning and evening prayer together, grace before and after meals, and the Angelus together as a family. And in one section of her biography, she spoke about the holy pictures in her home, which every Catholic family had holy pictures. Correct. But she mentioned one specifically, the Sacred Heart. And I thought it was again, a blessing that it was at Sacred Heart Basilica that she was beatified. Absolutely. Isn't it's that, it's I mean, almost as if things have come full circle. Yes, yes, yes. And <laughs> we can see from the time she was young, she had a great devotion to God yes. and developed a life of prayer. She herself says in um, her writings that she believes she achieved the age of reason by the probably three or four years old, mm. which is a little earlier than most of us. But her first memory, which makes this credible, was at three years old. The, na the church next to her home burned down. And she watched the firefighters taking all of the vestments 
etc., out of the church, and she found herself commenting on their behavior and was aware that she was doing so. Wow. So child. it's quite obvious she was at the age of reason at such a young age. What year was she born? She was born in 1901. Because she was very intelligent, her brother Charles said they couldn't help but put her in school at four years old. Really? Because she was already reading everything in the house. In English and Ukrainian. Probably. In Slovak. <laughs> Slovak. Slovak. <laughs> right. So she started Bayonne Public School in the first grade at four years old. Consequently, she graduated eighth grade at 11 years old. She was a young graduate. That's amazing. You know, uh, the salutatorian of her class at that time. And, and this is very uh, appropriate and, and relevant for our neighbors in Bayonne, New Jersey, Hudson County. Just, just to know that one of their own is now in a special place in heaven. It, it shows that, that sanctity comes from wherever God gives God's grace. Thank you. It's Even Hudson County. Absolutely. <laughs> and that we don't need to be unique or different. Um, probably most people would have described her as something of a bookworm. She was a prodigious reader, mm -hmm. but she also liked to play sports. Right. And while she was here at the college, she was played basketball, she played volleyball, she ran on the track team. That's great. She did what a normal student would have done in her time. We're, we're so used to, in, in the Catholic Church, of the saints being, yes, of other centuries, but so far some other centuries that we don't have a connection with them. I mean, to know she was here, she, she went to school here, she studied, exactly. she played here. And that she was a product of Bayonne Public Schools. Yes. She went to Bayonne High School, uh, where she graduated valedictorian, and perhaps prophetically, her principal at the time wrote a letter to the College of St. Elizabeth to say that he believed at some point she was going to bring great honor to her alma mater. Wow. And I'm, that, I, he probably thought academic honors. Right, right, right. But right. certainly it's the honor of her holiness. This is Father Louis Skirty with Sister Diane Colasalo. By Miss Ben, your name. Quite all right. <laughs> and Sister Diane and I are speaking about Blessed Miriam Teresa Damianovich. Uh, and we're going to do this in segments. So this is the end of segment one, her early years. And we're going to pick up in future shows. This has been Father Lou with Sister Diane. Thank you very much for joining us. And keep the word alive and well. And pass this on to your families and friends.